Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kids Independent Media Production. Today, we're taking a little break from all the hacks we've been doing and getting back to tuning a little bit, talking about the least paid attention to head on the drum set, the front of the bass drum. Okay, approaches to the front head or the rezzo head of the bass drum, they vary from nothing on there, which was the de facto thing for a very long time, um, when I was a kid for sure, all the way to full front heads and every imaginable porting scenario in between. It's been my experience that this is the least thought about, the least known about part of the drum set in terms of heads, tuning, and tuning relationships between the two sides of the drum. And it's something that I pay a lot of attention to, both in live situations and especially in recording situations, all the way to the point of people thinking that I'm changing muffling scenarios when I'm really just adjusting the tuning of the front head on the bass drum. What we're doing today is kind of a deep dive just into that tuning without changing any other variables. We have chosen a pitch Basically for our batter head's gonna stay the same the whole time. And we're just gonna kind of show you with a wide open drum with a port, exactly what it means to dramatically change the entire behavior and sound of your drum just with some really small adjustments to the front head. Now, if you've been with us for a long time, you may have seen us do something similar to this with toms a while ago. What we're gonna do is start with the batter head, which right now is tuned to a C. I tuned it to a C, not intentionally for that note, but just based on feel and sound of that head by itself. Then I made the front head basically finger tight. I got the lugs as tight as I could get them just with my fingers and the couple of them that were a little pitchy relative to the rest, I adjusted them to match that. Check the note and it's basically an A below this C, between an A flat and an A. Precise pitches when you're tuning that low, it's hard even to read them with a tuner of any kind. Um, but basically what we're dealing with is a minor third lower on the front of the drum than the batter. We're gonna start there. And I'd like to just jump into it, show you what it sounds like. We can talk about it a little bit after that. Now, as you will have heard, especially if you wore headphones, a uh, lot of rumble, a lot of low end tone, maybe not as punchy as it could be, but a big sound, sustain, basically is what we're talking about here. Now, if it were an unported front head, that would be even more dramatic, um, but even with the air getting let out of this port, we have a big sound that has some duration to it. You hear this sound, the first thing you think is, if it's too much, that is, gotta put something in there, gotta calm it down. But wait, not necessarily. What if we change the tuning scheme? Again, without fussing with the batter head at all. What if we raise the rezzo head up some? I've raised it up, it's now a fourth above, it's an F. Again, no muffling, nothing else, just raise that head. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so now, as I said, we're dealing with a fourth, which is to say a C to an F. This has shortened the sustain a fair amount. It's focused the tone a fair bit. It's punchier than it was before. There's still tons of low end, but the whole perceived pitch of the drum has come up. And if you've been through our many tom pitch experiments, you'll know that the perceived pitch of a drum is a combination of the two pitches that the, the heads are tuned to, and they work together to make this kind of third note or third sound that we experience. So we have bumped that up. The whole thing is kind of crunched in together, and we have this kind of punchier, shorter, more immediate kind of sound. This is by virtue basically of just having more tension, meaning faster response, meaning the air is moving faster, everything comes up. There's a ceiling to how high you can go with any drum based on the diameter, the material, the heads and everything before it chokes out. Let's see what happens if we go real high. We're gonna go now to an octave, which is to say this is a C and that's a C, but they're not the same C. They're a whole octave apart. So that is an entire octave higher than the batter head. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. 
I was expecting this to yield a less usable sound than this. Still usable, but this actually sounds pretty cool too. It reminds me of samples, it reminds me of hip hop, it reminds me of break beats and things like that that maybe have been pitch shifted a little bit or, or messed with in post-production right there in the acoustic drum with no muffling whatsoever. This is essentially a fairly simple instrument. It's a maple drum with heads on either side, nothing funny or special about it. But the range of usable sounds, again, with no muffling is alarming and they're all different and we didn't touch the batter head. For a lot of people that I've known and a lot of engineers and producers and different people that have opinions about drum sounds, they tend to be pretty batter head focused. And the reason I wanted to do this is because with a bass drum in particular, less so with the rest of the kit, but particularly with the bass drum, I think so much in terms of the batter head as being a feel choice based on the technique I'm using and the rezzo head as a tone, sound, etc. choice. And that means that if you're a person who likes a slack batter head because you maybe like to bury the beater, or if you're a person who likes a very high kind of boppy thing going on on your batter side, you still have all of this wiggle room tonally without changing the way that your drum feels. And it's worth mentioning that where I am in the pedal, these all feel the same. And on my side, they don't sound that different. But over there for the audience, in this case, the audience is the microphones, um, it's a pretty dramatic difference. And it doesn't take you having another drummer there to play your kit for you for you to hear this. Anyone can stomp on the pedal just to give you an idea of it, anybody at all. And that's what I did when I was younger because I was super curious about what the audience was getting. And that's kind of where I learned this. And it becomes even more important in recording situations where you might need to make adjustments to say, get out of the way of the bass or low keys, or maybe your band has low keys and bass in it and you need to get through. One of the ways to do that is to actually get yourself out of the sub range a little bit and start to occupy more of a low mid range. Even with a large drum like this, this is a 22. It's built to make bass, but it can do a lot more than that. Okay, so let's cut to it. Why might you want to go deep on this um, with your drum and your heads that you like to use and your playing? Basically because these are quick options. These are options that don't involve any kind of invasive muffling or even taking the heads off necessarily to get a lot of different sounds that even just on a simple gig in a certain room could make your life easier. You know, if, it, if you get in a room and the drum is behaving in a way that makes it difficult for you to do your job dynamically or some other way, um, these are just fast tools that I, I have to say have been the ones that have gotten me a, some of the most attention in both live and in studio situations of all sorts because being able to control your sound and then play how you play, I mean, that's extraordinarily important. It's worth noting as an aside that this isn't about the best sound of all of these sounds. This is about a palette that you can choose from based on the context you find yourself in. And I, for one, don't really get into or subscribe to the idea that I show up with my sound and everybody has to deal with it or that I'm particularly attached to that. I know what I like, but I'll do anything I have to do to get the job done. And this is one of those types of things where it's just a tool um, and knowing the range of your particular kit, the instruments that you own, is just gonna make you more versatile without you necessarily having to buy more drums. For anybody that's played gigs in really small spaces, whether it's a cafe situation or small clubs or maybe places that weren't originally meant to have live music in them, um, they do love to shove the drummer in the corner with your back in the corner and your elbows hitting the walls. I know you know what I'm talking about. And that kind of space is exactly the sort of situation where the low end of your instrument is going to get blown wildly out of proportion maybe to you where you're sitting and for sure to the rest of the room versus being against a flat wall or being at the back of the stage behind the rest of the instruments. This is exactly the kind of situation I'm talking about where a little bit of adjustment can make your life easier. It can make the rest of the band's life easier. Bass player is going to love you because he's going to be able to hear himself. That's huge for just having like the kind of camaraderie it takes on stage to be able to play well and have a good time. And also to a certain degree to be able to be asked back, you know, as a player or as a band because you're adjusting things subtly, but adjusting things to get the best sound out of your instrument and out of the band as you can. All right, the long awaited back to back, here we go.
So a younger version of myself would not have believed out of the gate that those were the same drum with the same heads and surely not that the batter head was tuned the same the whole time. And again, we've, we've talked a lot about toms and snares and things like this, but you know, your bass drum is no exception. Anyone out there who is into felt strips, uh, pillows, anything you might put in there, this behavior exists no matter the muffling system. This relationship is happening um, basically unless your drum is completely full to the brim <laughs> with muffling. So I encourage you to experiment a little bit with the type of muffling you like to use, but also making these adjustments and see what happens when you do that. Um, certainly if we had a pillow in there, this still matters. If you had felt strips and full heads on both sides, this still matters because this two heads working together to make the sound you're making, that's always the case no matter what your setup is. That about wraps it up. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe and hit the notification bell down there so you hear about our new episodes. We're still doing Tuesdays, 12.30 Eastern Time every week. We have a lot of extra things coming out, a few cool product features, a few amazing snare spotlights coming up, and a lot of extra content over on the Patreon coming up, especially some exclusive things that people have been excited about and looking forward to that we are amped to get on there. Really appreciate your support. Please follow the link below if you haven't already checked it out. There's lots to look at over there and a lot of tiers where you can get different amounts of extra stuff from us and help us make sure that we can keep this going. And lastly, if you have opinions about intervals or pitches or bass drum tuning in general where it comes down to pitches of heads working together, let us know in the comments because I am always fascinated whether you know, you're the big boomy uh, bottom kind of situation or something tight and punchy. It's still the sound that you're making. 